Picture this, you just graduated engineering after spending the last four years studying and accumulating $60,000 in debt, but you can't get a job. You see, that would suck, and let's be honest here, we all study engineering for really one reason. Get sick, high paying jobs after you graduate. And to get to that point, you need internships. And sadly, studying and doing schoolwork won't help you land internships, so you need to do more outside of school. Now that you know internships are important, you get excited at the possibility of working at some pretty cool companies like Apple, Uber, Facebook, etc. Now you create your first resume, slapping on whatever experience you can come up with, then using that resume to apply to your favorite company's website. You wait, wait, and wait, hoping to get an email saying they want to interview you, but you just get faced with rejection after rejection after rejection. Feeling lost and hopeless, you start to wonder if engineering is even for you. I was there and I get it, but I've managed to get 5 internships throughout my time in engineering. So in this video, I'm gonna lay out a step-by-step -step plan on how you can get internships even though you may have no experience starting out. I'll break down this internship guide into 5 steps. Get initial experience, build your resume, build your portfolio, get your resume seen, and finally ace the interview. Let's start from scratch. You're in your first year or freshman year of university and you're starting in a blank piece of paper. To figure out what you should put on your resume for it to be successful, you first need to figure out what kind of job you want, what skills does the job need, and how you can build those skills. So to figure that out, we're going to start off by going to LinkedIn. For example, let's say you're interested in a mechanical design engineering role. So you're going to go to the job section on LinkedIn and search up mechanical design engineer and see what jobs are available. And if you're interested in, let's say, working as a software developer or a firmware engineer, then you're going to search up those job titles as well. Anyways, once you search up your desired job title, start looking at the job description for all the jobs that come up. For every job description you read through, highlight the key terms that this job is looking for. For example, this particular job is looking for someone familiar with 3D printing, CAD tools, sensors, injection molding. So highlight these terms and look at the next job description. Here's another mechanical engineering job and they're also looking for someone experienced with sensors and CAD design. And after you do hundreds of these job descriptions, you start to develop an idea of the kind of skills that are needed for the jobs that you want. I've personally looked through hundreds if not thousands of different job descriptions and I've basically developed a list of things that my particular job that I like is looking for. For me personally, as someone who's really into mechanical design engineering jobs, I've noticed that they really care about your experience with CAD tools like SOLIDWORKS, Annex, CATIA, etc. I've also noticed that they really want you to have experience designing things that are meant to be manufactured and assembled, and they also want you to understand how things like plastics and metals are built. With this list of skills now created, I now have a better idea of what you need to put on your resume for the particular job you're looking for. You obviously shouldn't lie and say that you have that experience even though you don't. Instead, start learning these skills on your own using things like YouTube or Google to find the answers. There are so many tutorials that teach CAD and lots of resources online that teach 3D printing and how to design things to actually be manufactured. So spend some time learning these skills and work on personal projects that use the skills you just learned. And if you don't want to work on personal projects or maybe you don't have any idea for personal projects, then what I recommend is joining a student design team or engineering club at your school. Usually those teams or clubs will give you work that uses the knowledge that you just learned and will even be able to teach you more that can actually be really applicable to the jobs that you want to get in the future. Now that you've worked on these projects and joined these engineering design teams, you now have experience that you can put on that blank piece of paper from earlier, which brings us to the second step of building your resume. In general, I have to keep my resume pretty simple and break it down into three sections. Skills, experience, and education. And to explain each section, let's have a look at this resume template that I created. At the very top, I'll have my name as well as my major and the university I'm attending. I'll also put my contact information here. Then under the skills section, I pretend like that's all the hiring manager will read and list all the skills I have like SOLIDWORKS, CAD, 3D printing, etc. And I'll basically summarize my entire resume here. And you should write down your skills in like bullet points. For example, something you can put in this section would be experience in designing 3D models based on DFM and DFA using CAD software such as SOLIDWORKS and CATIA V5. Now this would be like a good thing to put in your summary of qualifications or in your skill section for your resume if you're interested in mechanical engineering jobs. And you should probably have like four to six bullet points in your skill section that really addresses a lot of the skills that the job was looking for in the job description. Next is talking about your experiences. In this section is where you talk about the personal projects that you've done and the work you did with your engineering student design teams. This way you should put if you have no actual work experience. Obviously if you've done paid engineering work in the past then you should talk about that in this section. Just make sure that when you include bullet points for the work that you did, that you talk about what you did, how you did it, and the results of the work that you did. For example, instead of saying designed a smart home device, you should say improve the fixture design for a smart home device using SOLIDWORKS to add self-locating features, reducing manufacturing times by 10%. 
If you notice in the second example, the what aspect is improve the fixture design for smart home device. The how aspect was that I used SOLIDWORKS to add self-locating features, and the results of what I did was I was able to reduce manufacturing times by 10%. By doing this, the person reading your resume has a clear idea of what you did, which means that you're less likely to get rejected. Finally, the last part of your resume should be your education section. Here's where you write down the name of your university and the program that you're studying. And some people suggest not to include the year you're graduating if you're a freshman or a first year, just because some companies will like neglect people who are in first year even though they may have like decent experience. So just keep that in mind. And in general, make sure to just keep your resumes no longer than a page. Now you see, everyone submits a resume when they apply for a job, obviously. But not everyone will submit a portfolio for the jobs that they're applying for. However, you're not going to be like most people. And regardless of what type of engineering you're doing, you should always make sure to submit a portfolio to showcase your work. If you're interested in software jobs, then create a GitHub account and upload your projects there, and then add a link to your GitHub account on your resume. But if you're interested in mechanical or hardware jobs, then take pictures of the things that you designed and things that you've built, and add that at the end of your resume. For example, this is what a section of my own portfolio looks like. One of the projects I worked on in the past was creating the enclosure for a device called Centrifuge Tube Breeder. Although I could have just put the experience on my resume and submitted that, instead I decided to show images of the design and what it looked like after it was built. I also made sure to specify what I built, exactly how I did it, and the results of the work that I did. In general, just creating a portfolio helped me land way more job interviews. So if there's one thing you get out of this video is to make sure to create a portfolio. Now that you've built this incredible resume and portfolio, you need to get people to see it. So you're going to go back to LinkedIn and apply to the jobs that you think you'll be qualified for. But honestly, sometimes that just isn't enough. So we're going to take it one step further. Once you go to LinkedIn and find a job that you like and you think you'll be qualified for, do these five steps. Step one, apply to the job opening on the company's website. Step two, go to the search section of LinkedIn and search up the company you just applied to and filter the people that show up further by only showing the results of people that went to your university. Step three, message people saying something like this. Hi, X. My name is Tamer Shaheen and I'm a mechanical engineering student from the University of Waterloo. And notice that you're also an alum of University of Waterloo working at whatever company. Would love to learn from your experience in the field if you have a couple minutes for a call. Sometimes people respond, sometimes they don't, but the purpose of having this call or having this chat is to really just build that connection with that person. And you want to do that for two reasons. First, they can let you know what the job is actually like, what the company generally looks for when they're hiring people, and what you can do on your resume to stand out. Second, if they like you and see that you could potentially be a good fit in the company, they can even refer you or invite you to some maybe networking events so you can network with even more people in that company. But we're not going to stop there. Step four is that you want to click on the company you want to work for, then go to the people section and search up the job title you want. Now, a list of people who are where you want to be will show up. So now what you want to do is you want to message them saying something like, Hi, X. My name is Samer Shaheen and I'm a mechanical engineering student. I'd love to know what it takes to be a successful engineer at whatever company and how I could land a job there one day. Would you be open to have a call to discuss it? Again, doing this will just allow you to build more connections and help you eventually land the job that you want. Finally, step five would be to wait for a response. Usually not everyone responds, but some do. And to be honest, you really just need one person to respond and connect you with the right people to eventually get you that job. Personally, for me, I think I've cold messaged like hundreds of people and only like 20 or 30 actually replied to me. And out of those 20 or 30 people, like one or two of them actually led to a job interview. Anyways, speaking of the interview, after doing all this work to get it, what should you do on your interview to make sure that you ace it? First, make sure that you can explain every single bullet point on your resume. For example, if an interviewer were to ask you why you did a particular thing or how you did it, you shouldn't hesitate to answer. The more confident you appear when you're explaining things that you did on your resume, the more likely for the interviewer to believe that you actually did those things and you're not lying on your resume. Next, you need to be prepared to answer technical questions. For every engineering major, the technical questions they ask tend to differ, but it basically involves the interviewer asking you questions based on stuff you learn in your classes. For example, if you're interested in getting software or jobs, you should be using things like leak code. But if you're interested in getting mechanical design jobs, then you should become really familiar with things like mechanical design, mechanics of material, and different manufacturing methods. I've made a couple other videos to talk about the technical questions that get asked in mechanical engineering jobs in more detail, so I'll link them up here so you can check them out. But the best way to prepare for your job interviews is to do mock interviews. So grab a friend or an upper year student or maybe even a TA or a professor if you're close enough with them and ask them to interview you so you kind of simulate that anxiety that you normally feel during an interview. This is so important because you can prepare for the technical questions all day long, but if you're not prepared for the pressure and anxiety that you're going to be feeling during the job interview, then you'll end up feeling it. But that's it. To summarize everything I talked about in this video, one, Go on LinkedIn to find the experience you need for the jobs you want. Two, join engineering clubs and teams at your school to build that experience. Three, put that experience on your resume and portfolio. 
Four, message people on LinkedIn that are where you wanna be to build that connection. And five, do mock interviews. With these five steps checked off, I am confident you'll be able to get internships at your dream company. And when you do, because I'm really confident that you will, message me on Instagram telling me that you got it and I'll congratulate you and be so happy for you. When you're applying to jobs, just remember that rejection is part of the process. And regardless of how many rejections you get, it really doesn't matter because you just need one job offer. Anyways, I hope this video brought you value. If it did, please make sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.